Hey everyone, have you ever wanted to relive your glory days of playing classic Mario Kart or other party games? Now how about doing it on a 100 inch screen? Well, I've got just the product for you. Meet the Weemius K9 Projector. Is it gonna blow you away completely? <laughs> Likely not. But what this little guy can do is help enjoy moments or memories with friends or loved ones on a grand scale. Will this be the best screen in your house? Absolutely not. It still is a budget tier projector. But I would wager to guess that this will become your most enjoyable screen in the house for under $400. Getting into specs, there's absolutely nothing to write home about, at least at face value. Although there is one egregious sin in my opinion. On their website and marketing, they state that the projector can support 4K, which is fine in and of itself. However, reading further into it, they do lay it on pretty thick, heavily suggesting that this is a 4K projector by even stating this 4K portable projector right in their notes. Now, when I do hook up a PC through HDMI, I'm able to get 4K 30, but that is basically useless to me and anybody that would be playing games on it. Now, when digging a tiny bit deeper or just reading the full spec list and promo materials, what they mean is the projector can indeed accept a 4K source. However, that source will be downsampled to 1080p. Now, this can have its advantages as it can act as a form of anti-aliasing when taking a 4K signal. If you have the latest generation console and only a 1080p screen, you've experienced this already. I do personally feel this is somewhat shady marketing as to the layman, they could just see 4K on the box and assume it was a true 4K. Would they likely notice or care? Probably not, but this also plays into the next point of HDR. Same as monitors, something can be advertised as supporting HDR, but never being able to get truly bright enough to do it any sort of justice. The brightness on this projector is acclaimed 700 ANSI lumens, which some would say is decent brightness, if you were talking about nits. Now, the difference between nits, that they're measured from the actual image to your eyes, similar to determining how bright the sun is on a particular day to someone's eyes. Now, for lumens, it is measured from the output of light reflected off of one square meter. Think of this as a projector bouncing off a screen or a wall. For more details, please follow my sources below. Now, with the important comparison of nits and lumens out of the way, we can circle it back around to the HDR output. Again, something can accept the input, but the output may not do it justice. In my personal opinion, HDR is best experienced with at minimum 800 nits of brightness supported by your display or TV. Now, obviously there's much, much more to it, but to shatter the glass for some people, your crappy Walmart Amazon brand TV is not giving you a proper HDR image and you'd often be better off without it. Now, lumens and nits are not one-to-one, -one, so seeing 700 lumens may seem bright, but when you convert it to nits, that's only just over 200 nits of brightness, which is very, very dim. That is in cheap laptop territory. Well, with all that being said, my personal advice here, even with a claim 20,000 to one contrast ratio, it does not deliver a good enough experience for HDR content. It may sound like I'm dogging on this projector in particular, but this is a common practice with any screen. Whether it be monitors or TV manufacturers, they all make all sorts of claims, but cannot deliver specifically on it. For other specs, we have Bluetooth 5.2, Wi-Fi 6, there's an RJ45 jack, two HDMI ports, two USB-A ports, and an audio out jack. Speaking more specifically to the projector, it has a fully sealed optical system, which should prevent dust getting under the lens. They support Dolby Audio with the included 20 watt dual stereo speakers, to which I was actually quite surprised with how they sounded. Now, for what they were, obviously, they're not going to blow the doors off, but they are definitely more than usable. Now, even when the projector is cast onto a semi-white wall as well, it was enjoyable to me. But I know there are much better options out there to do a proper justice. I did go out and purchase a 100-inch projector screen that has a black backing and a white screen. It's from a company called Yandude. However, they did not supply anything to myself. I'll leave a link for the screen used in the description below. Setup was an absolute breeze. You plug it in and on the first new power, you'll have to wait about 30 seconds or so. And that is only once or if you lose power to it. After that, you're brought into the Linux Android based operating system and it's completely basic, but there are a few basic applications there. 
I would always be weary and take precaution when connecting foreign products to your network or give it any sort of account access. A great option here is to utilize at minimum guest networks separated from your main network. Once connected, you are given access to Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, Disney, and Hulu. However, they state that Netflix is officially supported on their device, and that means that the application can and will play at HD quality. There's an application store, but no Google Play Store. I would avoid this store at all costs. Now, to be honest, I would much rather hook in a Roku or a Google Chromecast and utilize those via HDMI sources. Nothing against their software, but if it doesn't have any official Google App Play support, uh, I'll just use something else that will likely perform better and give better value overall, both with and without the projector. You can screencast your devices to the projector, but I never really personally enjoyed using that option because the formatting will typically get lost and your phone screen needs to be on as well. It's great for sharing quick photos or videos with family and friends, but beyond that, meh. Now, in order to get iOS devices to cast to the projector, they do have an included Chromecast type dongle specifically for Apple devices. Just make sure you're buying the correct version as some versions do have the software included to do so without the dongle. Now, positioning and projectors are key. Now, for the best experience, you'll want to have it however many feet away as per the specs of the manufacturer, blah, 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 blah. But if you just want a quick and dirty setup for a projector, this one is honestly pretty good. So when you put it down, it has the auto keystone and auto focus uh, correction, everything. You turn it on and it'll just kind of magically adjust to whatever you're kind of casting it on within reason. You can't do super, super extreme angles, but I was pretty impressed with how steep of an angle you could have it on for it to actually keystone correctly and look somewhat correct. Usage for me, honestly, has been as a second screen while I work. I can either have it playing off to my side on the screen, or I can rotate the projector to cast to the blank wall behind my desk. This gives quite a good experience of idly viewing content, and I could hook it up directly to my PC and use it as a true second monitor. However, I would honestly much rather just have it as a cast device and not really be tethered to much. Other use cases have been to watch the odd movie with my wife when we want it to be in a more kind of thematic mood and it's more about the experience of watching the movie than the movie itself. It's pretty impressive to have a portable 100 to 300 inch screen. Now, however, the next logical step would be to play multiplayer split screen games so that you can have your own sizable screen versus splitting a 55 inch TV or something like that. This brings me back to the days of when my father had a cheapish, but still kind of okay projector for the time. We played Mario Kart on it for a player split screen. At that time, we just had to cast a screen onto a piece of drywall. However, unlike the old projector, you didn't need to perform any sort of safety rituals with the projector for shutting it down, powering it on. Everything is all handled internally and will cool itself down properly with this unit. Also, thanks to modern technology, we have devices like the Steam Deck, ROG Ally, or Nintendo Switch to be able to instantly hook up and play multiplayer games on the go. I can see this projector being great for campers with young families, and some would kind of call it blasphemy for bringing one along, but it would be moments like that that kids would carry with them forever, watching movies or playing games while winding down next to a campfire. Don't expect to be doing competitive gaming on this thing as it is only 60 hertz, and while there is no rated response time, I'm sure it is not spectacular, but it was more than enough to play some casual games on, and Helldivers was pretty good as well. As mentioned previously, this may not be for everyone, but I can assume that you already know whether or not you're the type of person who would need or even want a portable projector. Campers, people with nice backyards, with a pool or hot tub, to just casually watch something is a more social event than anything else. A family member of mine uses one to screen old movies in their backyard. Even if you don't want to use it outdoors, as it would have to be at night, it is portable enough to bring over for a game night event as well. Now, if you're able to find a nice portable screen, that is a bonus. However, if they have a white-ish wall, that would be more than enough for playing Smash Bros or something similar. The list goes on, with these projectors now getting into what I would call usable or okay-ish territory in both price and performance, the idea of picking up a cheap projector could be tempting for many. The K9 projector is currently on sale for $379 US dollars with a regular price of $499. However, you can get it on their site for $299 currently in USD pricing. The projector though is currently $399 Canadian, but you can get an additional 5% off using my code in the description. 
In conclusion, and to no surprise, this projector will not blow you away in picture quality and brightness. However, where I would say it punches above its weight class is the included software for what it is. The ease of use and auto keystone functions makes it up a breeze, and pricing is also very competitive in the Amazon projector landscape, with it actually being a brighter projector than most of the competition. They do have a good amount of positive reviews on Amazon, with most of the complaints being in relation to the somewhat false advertising and 4K support. Now, one other complaint I had found on the US store was that the fan had gotten louder after an extended period of time. They claim it came in waves and was a little bit quieter, a little bit louder at times, and their response from support was that it was within spec and to turn up the volume to combat it. The user did claim to discontinue using the projector due to the fan noise. Now, I don't really know what fans they are using, but they are definitely no knock to us. They are tolerable in my opinion, but my ears are slightly damaged. My wife did state how quiet it was compared to the ones that they have work, but I can only assume that they have a somewhat more professional and permanent solution. All in all, for the price, I don't think this is a bad product at all. Would I get it at full price? Likely not, but thankfully you don't have to due to it being on sale right now. I hope this helps you form a better decision, and as always, no money changed hands for this review, and the only thing of value was to keep the projector once I was done. To be quite honest, I've had this for quite some time now, and I've used it almost daily with no issue. Take that for what you will. I hope you all have a great day.